This clip is providing an overview of the Atkinson Schifrin model and it comes on the back of three separate clips I did for each separate store. You can check out my YouTube channel for more on that. So sensory memory is the entry point for information registered from the environment in which you can hold information in its raw, unprocessed form for a brief period of time. And importantly, it acts as a filter by holding on to the information just long enough for us to attend to that information. And if so, it will be processed in our short-term memory. In VCE psychology, we focus on two types of sensory memory, iconic and echoic memory. Iconic being your visual sensory memory, which enables you to maintain visual continuity should you experience an isocade or when you're viewing a movie, etc. Echoic memory, your auditory sensory memory, holds on to information just long enough so that you can make sense of what other people are saying, but it's short enough to provide a rapid filtering function so that we don't get overloaded with the auditory information in its raw form and get confused by the sequence of words that we actually process. Information that's registered in our sensory memory that's attended to will generally be processed in our short-term memory, which according to Miller has a capacity of 7 plus or minus 2 bits or chunks of information. And in the absence of rehearsal, it can hold that information for up to 20 seconds before it starts to decay. It's generally stored phonetically or acoustically. And basically, short-term memory forms the seat of our consciousness. It processes information that's attended to from the sensory memory and it also retrieves information from our long-term memory, manipulates it, etc. and enables us to think in the present. We can increase the capacity of STM by grouping bits of information into larger chunks. We can also increase the duration of STM by vocalising or sub-vocalising that information, i.e. using maintenance rehearsal without actively linking this to an existing long-term memory. For information to be stored in LTM, it needs to be encoded and consolidated. LTM appears to be limitless in terms of its capacity and duration, and the majority of information that is stored there is done so semantically via the use of elaborative rehearsal i.e. it's stored according to its meaning by linking it to existing memories. LTM is a passive storage system. It contains a vast quantity of information that is not currently in our consciousness unless we actually queue it, put that information in our short-term memory to process it. In terms of types of long-term memories, we've got implicit memories that you can perform without conscious awareness, as opposed to explicit memories that do require conscious storage and retrieval. So declarative or explicit memories are memories that we can consciously declare, whether they be semantic memories, which are largely facts, or episodic memories, which are personal ev events relating to time and place, as opposed to a procedural memory which we don't need to consciously declare and we often find it hard to actually explain how we do them, i.e. executing a backhand in tennis. So in terms of loss of information from the three individual stores, much of the information that is registered for that brief period in sensory memory is lost through lack of detention, i.e. it simply decays. If it does reach short-term memory, it's often displaced through interference and often we can't access information from long-term memory because of the inability to use the right cue or we might have proactive or retroactive interference or it might indeed decay due to lack of revisitation of that memory, so a reverse of consolidation. In terms of the strengths of the model, well, firstly that it is a multi-store system that identifies the varying duration and capacity of the three memory stores. 
It also explains why amnesia patients have suffered damage to the hippocampus and might have difficulty consolidating new long-term memories, and yet despite of this, they still have a perfectly functioning short-term memory. In terms of the weaknesses of the model, it will badly and Hitch argue that it oversimplified short-term memories at unitary memory system as opposed to their multi-store system which actually addressed the different manner, manner in which we actually process visual and spatial as well as verbal information. Other critics argued that it overemphasized the importance of rehearsal i.e. some information that we accurate, um, actively and regularly rehearse just won't stick in our long-term memory whereas other memories that aren't actually actively rehearsed will actually be stored for an extended period in our LTM. It also failed to address the manner in which when we retrieve information from our long-term memory, particularly episodic memories, that we often have to reconstruct aspects of those memories and that can actually alter the memory in time. So I hope this has helped. Again, look out for look on my channel for individual video, individual clips on sensory STM and LTM.